Hey, this is Redbin coming to you live from the Road Famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hedgeclamp. Hell yeah, what's happening, people? You're at the number one live podcast in the world. How about you make some fucking noise on a Monday night? Jesus Christ, Brian Redbin's hey, here, Tony. everybody. What's up, guys? We're back again. Just flew in from uh, an insane show in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Chicago, Illinois, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Appleton. Yeah. Crazy week. We've been going nonstop. Shows every single night for uh, for a couple weeks now. We fly to New York tomorrow. How yeah, about that? We'll... Poughkeepsie. Yep. New York has their own Kill Tony, and uh, still a couple tickets remaining for that second show at the Gramercy, the 10 p.m. show. And then we roll right into Skankfest, and then... Um, yeah, and then uh, tickets just went on sale for the beautiful Fillmore Theater in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, our biggest show of all time. Over 2,200 people will be in attendance at wow. a Kill Tony at the Fillmore How crazy is Theater. That? A live nation event for a show that started in the goddamn belly room six started years ago. Started from the belly room, now we're here. Unbelievable, man. And, of course, Kill Tony Mania uh, still uh, in effect coming in October, the, uh, the annual super event in San Francisco. Six shows, two in Sacramento, four in San Francisco. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Those are very special shows where we have, uh, where we bring along with us uh, uh, an extra, extra large cast and mix them in, put them on panel. Yeah, it's bigger, bigger cast than here. Time. Yeah, it's, yep, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. But let me tell you, man, the tr the traveling is exhausting. And I got home today. I was beat up, right? And uh, the wife woke up early, went for a run at like 5 a.m., one of those fucking Cam Haynes fucking uh, days for her. So by the time I got home around noon, I was exhausted. We napped out, right? Beat to death. I woke up at about 3 p.m., feeling good, but not good enough to cook food or anything like that, right? I'm exhausted. I have some extra money from fucking working so much. And you know what? I'm like... Let's have some fun. And I went on Postmates and ordered a bunch of delicious stuff. Really treated myself. And you're being serious. We, absolutely serious. Boom Thai brought the, brought the flavor. Had some Tom Ka soup, some drunken uh, noodles, some spicy noodles, some mm -hmm. wontons. Had some goddamn shrimp dumplings. I went crazy today. And it feels good to reward yourself and to treat yourself with fresh food fast. When you need red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., and ibuprofen at 10 a.m., Postmate it. Postmates is your personal food delivery service, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. I was craving Wendy's the other day when I was in a hotel room in the middle of nowhere, and I ordered it at like 11 p.m. at night. It's great. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the U.S. and offer delivery from all the restaurants, grocery and convenience stores, and traditional retailers. You can even get them to some places. You can go to Best Buy and stuff. Yep. You could possibly want or need anything. They can get it 24 hours a day, three 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you need within an hour. Yep. No more trips to the store. You don't even need to know what store it is. Postmates will deliver anything you want. Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses. Track your delivery in real time. That's cool. You can see exactly, exactly where they're at. You know, uh, the thing I like to do because I, I, I live in a uh, I live in a nice little neighborhood, but I don't want anybody knowing exactly where my door is, yeah. right? Yeah. So I sort of like, when I see them coming, I sort of like go for a little 30 second jog yeah. down the street pretend like I live somewhere else yep. just, just in case uh, just in case the delivery driver knows me and hates me if I've ever made fun of them you know <laughs> during a show or something like that I'm like you're not gonna know where I live but for the normal person that probably won't happen yeah, yeah. exactly so you just order <laughs> so you, you use your and, real and you know when they're at your door <laughs> and for a limited time this is true Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days to start your free deliveries, download the app and use the code KILLTONY. 
That's code KILLTONY for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it. Download Postmates and save with the code KILLTONY. And, you know, let me tell you, that's a good thing for you comedians. I was broken, struggling, and starving. We, I didn't have Postmates back then. You, I had to fucking either uh, walk or, uh, you know, ride a bicycle to Subway or whatever. And I'm telling you, these deals are incredible. With $100 free dollars, you get to eat for at least, what, two weeks? Well, it's only for one week. But it reminds me, you know, that reminds me, me talking about uh, my struggling, struggling days of when I started. It was so hard to find a job. You know, I picked up a shift working at Starbucks in the early mornings when I was still working the door here. And, you know, I, was, I needed a job that could help me do stand-up comedy while also making some money to survive. And it's so hard to find a job, even with my uh, crazy, you know, uh, restaurant resume. The best I could d uh, do was Starbucks, and it was hard to get that it's really hard to find a job. But what if you had your own personal recruiter to help you find a better job? <laughs> now, ZipRecruiter's technology can do that for you. Yeah, and after you ate, you know, you go download the ZipRecruiter job search app. Let, let it know what kind of jobs you're interested in, and its technology starts doing the work. The ZipRecruiter app finds jobs you'll like and puts your profile in front of employers who may be looking for somebody like you. If an employer likes your profile, <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> if an employer likes your profile, ZipRecruiter lets you know. So if you're interested in a job, you can apply. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated job search app. Yeah. Yes, you could even find a job that uh, you don't know how to read, and uh, you can still get the job. Yeah. And our listeners should download the ZipRecruiter job search app today for free and let the power of technology work for you. Don't wait. The sooner you download the free ZipRecruiter job search app, the sooner it can help you find a job. ZipRecruiter. There you go. All right. Hey, Ryan J. Ebelt's here, everybody. He's drawing tonight's episode. He drew the tour posters that uh, a lot of people got all around the country the oh, yeah. past few weeks. A lot of signed posters. And he made us a fresh, special New York batch. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, wait till you guys see. It's probably my favorite poster of all time. Features the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, Godzilla, King Kong, and Feminist Stacy all on wow. one uh, crazy poster. You have to see it to believe it. RyanJEBelt.com for all those prints. And uh, so, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just get into this, shall we? This is an episode that I have been excited about for weeks. Truly six years in the making. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we were truly the number one live podcast in the world before we even had this guy on a show. This here at the Comedy Store is a true legend, a true icon. Uh, he, he's uh, what some people, he, comics comic perhaps you could call him. Uh, very unhinged, uh, controlled chaos. Anything can happen. And it's his first time on this show ever. Uh, a true comedy store, the king of late night now at the comedy store. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the great Brian Holtzman, everybody. Wow. Look at it. <laughs> Here he is. The great and powerful Brian Holtzman. Let me tell you. That'll be me. You, uh, you are. This is the type of guy that everybody hustles in on a late Friday or Saturday night when we've all already done our spots and are hanging out, and then we find out Holtzman's on in the main room. There's a buzz that circulates around the building Let's amongst. Do comedians. another 45 minutes of fucking commercials <laughs> while we're up here. Don't you have one for the morning after pill? Come on, we're gonna come here for fucking commercials. No, I. I Yes, it has begun. And uh, you're also, on top of being one of my favorite stand-up comedians, you are also, you have blown our minds on Instagram. Uh, follow him on it's Instagram. It's on YouTube Brian also. Holtzman. Brian Holtzman. Brianholtzman.com. He's Brian Holtzman on Facebook, and he's at Holtzman Brian on Twitter, just for you dyslexic people that... Uh, Write like it down! <laughs> Write it down! He actually, he actually had this printed and laminated Look and brought it here. For the first time ever, a guest that is a classy damn individual. 
And uh, I, I'm just so excited to have you here, Brian. Anybody that knows my story knows that uh, everything I uh, do and am and have become is literally because of the black and red here at the Comedy Store, a place, the first place I ever saw a stand-up show, the first open mic I ever signed up for, the first place I ever performed at. And, uh, you know, I was built here from years as a door guy and a paid regular. <laughs> and you are... <laughs> you are... My oh, I'm sorry, I must have dozed off, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> this is already probably my favorite episode of all time. This is the home court advantage, L.A., back yeah. at the comedy store. Heck yeah, this is it. The two beasts of the main room, Holtzman and Hinchcliffe uh, and Kill Tony coming together. And this is so exciting. And uh, a really cool thing is that uh, his brother is here. It is his 71st birthday. A, a veteran of war for your United States Air Force. And to celebrate his birthday, a little something special to play a, just a little song for his brother and for all of us proud Americans. Make some noise for Moan Red, everyone. Come on. Follow him on social media at Moan Red, M-O-A-N-R-E-D. How about that? And how about one more time for Jay Holtzman's 71st birthday? 71, and he's still using the restroom by himself. <laughs> there he is right there. Yeah. Come on, make some noise. It's a goddamn veteran of war. This guy fought in Thailand for you. All right, sit down, Jay. Sit the fuck down, Jay. You big fucking ham. 
All right, so let's keep it moving along. Uh, we do have a band on this show. Moan Red reminded me how much I love music and that we have a band. Every single episode, they commit to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be. On some of these road shows, maybe it's a brand new character. Maybe it's the return of some of our favorite characters. We had the Chicago Cops in Chicago. We had Fishermen and Painters, brand new characters this week. Let's all find out what they are tonight. Make some noise for them. They are the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Chroma Chris, and Joel Berg. Joel Jimenez. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> wow, look at this. Oh, man, they look like frat guys. They all have Letterman jackets on. Chroma Chris just bought a beer. Oh, my God. This is incredible. Wow, he just threw a, a shoulder pads out into the audience. Oh my God, wow, you're so close to me. Joelberg is close. <laughs> These guys are all wearing the same Letterman jacket. This is incredible. And they're wow. all fucking cheerleaders too. Look at <laughs> wow, Jeremiah Watkins, uh, wh I mean, uh, you're a frat guy, right? A college frat guy with an extremely good hairline? <laughs> Team quarterback, what's up? Wow, quarterback. My goodness, what's your name? Curtis. Hi, Curtis. How are you? Are you excited to be on the show tonight? <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow, and then back over there, we have uh, what appears to be someone from uh, the movie Back to the Future, Chroma Chris. Co it's Cody Stevenson, safety, fullback, center. <laughs> Cody <laughs> Stevenson. He dabbles in a little bit of everything. Cody Stevenson, whose voice never changes character to character. It's always uh, pretty much the same voice every single week. How about a hand for David Deary out here hustling around? Ooh, Jeremiah's got the power sax tonight. I mean, uh, Curtis has this the beautiful, powerful Menchi music saxophone. And then there's Ludwig's own. Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, how are you, frat guy? You, uh, you brothers with the other guy that has the same haircut as you over here? My name's Brent. Yeah. I'm the water boy, and I'll fuck your girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> What's up, Hey, y'all. Damn, we got Curtis, hey, Cody, hey, and Brent. Hey, Brent, tell them what the A stands for on our jackets. Yeah. Anal, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Holy it made Joel shit. nervous. This is so, so exciting. We have, uh, for the first time ever, frat guys on this show. You guys look great. Those are powerful You're Letterman jackets. How about a hand for the band, huh? We got the band. We got Ultimate. We got Red Band. Ryan J. Danny Lucas up in the bird's nest. Which brings me to this. The one and only Bucket of Destiny, everybody. Bunch of people signed up before the show for the opportunity to get a chance at 60 seconds uninterrupted in an interview on this stage, the most beautiful stage in comedy, the main room of the world famous comedy store. If I pull your name out of the bucket, you know what it is. You get 60 seconds. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the one and the only West Hollywood Bear. There. Oh, it's hungry, too. Look at that. It hasn't seen us in a week. All these other bears have had their shots at everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is exciting. You guys ready to start the show? And we haven't yeah. even started yet. That's right. Yeah. You, thought, you thought you were already at the show. Now it starts. Heck, yeah. This is exciting. Applicants, get ready. <laughs> this is going to be a blast. All right, your first comedian getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Kyle Kelly, everybody. Here we go. From the lucky spot, the farthest corner. Always that back corner. I knew you were going to say that. Here we go. I believe it's his first time on Kill Tony as well. Come on, guys, make some noise one more time for Kyle Kelly. Yo, did you know that on average it takes women about 20 minutes to be able to come? 20 minutes. And uh, men, six minutes. Six minutes. And that number goes down dramatically if someone sticks a finger in your ass. And I learned that the hard way, really. The first time my girl ever stuck a finger in my ass, I came 
immediately. It was like the first time the cum had ever left my body. In my entire life before that, I'm 26, I always believed that my butthole was a one-way street. And on that day, my entire belief system was challenged. I had an existential crisis. Like, does this make me gay? How much did I like it, really? What else fits up there? How gay am I? One knuckle? Two knuckles? A fist? Hi, I'm Kyle. Potentially one fist gay. Heck yeah, Kyle Kelly. You're not dumb each other and you're not... Hey. Kyle, this is your first time on the show. Oh, second. Second. Oh, yes. Go right ahead, uh, Curtis. Yeah, I'm no mathematician, but this guy's five-fifths gay. <laughs> five-fifths gay? Heck yeah. Uh, so, uh, your second time on the show. Uh, is that all true? Yeah. That happened. So what did we find out? How, how much do you, can you fit on your butt? Um, I'm about one knuckle at the moment. Um, Which cook, finger? Uh, Which toe? She has skinnier fingers than I do. That's a start. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> coconut, coconut oil, two knuckles. Coconut oil, two knucks. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Oh, my God. Two, a, two thumbs or which finger are we talking um, about? She's got like a, probably just, a man pinky, a woman index. Wow. Damn, mm. she's got a thick pinky, huh? She Spider-Man's you. Does she have a class ring on when she does it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like the way you set up the, uh, the cum... But I personally identified with the anal. I would have put the anal first and the cum second. And if you come again, please, get to the fucking stage a little faster. <laughs> I personally think the minute should start when your name is fucking called. Oh, wow. I like, I like that, that idea. Because, you know, like the television show, come on down, those big... Fat people, they run the fuck down. <laughs> That's a great idea. You, you, you walked up here like you were on some fucking gay fashion show or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, I'm here, I'm here. But no offense, I thought the material was excellent. The presentation was outstanding. Thank you. This guy took I the words it. from my mouth, dude. Brian Holtzman is here, everybody. I am excited about this. Laying down the law. Let's check in with Curtis over here. Can I just say this is the weirdest episode of Adam's Family I've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Kyle, tell us, uh, tell us more about you. How long have you been doing stand-up? Um, since uh, This was actually my first open mic since uh, April 1st. April 1st. The, uh, this is your first time on stage since April 1st. You made a fool of yourself tonight, dude. Yeah. Um, April Fools? April 1st? Nobody? Nerds. <laughs> Did you just bully the audience? Yeah, dude. I'm fucking all of your girlfriends tonight. Uh, wow. That's so incredible. No, um, so that's why it takes table. you so long to get to this stage, because you literally just wait three months between spots. Yeah. To have your asshole healed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for work, Kyle? Um, I work at a gym, and I teach yoga. You work at a gym? How much you lift, dude? <laughs> I can lift you. Can you lift him? Yeah, you right. really think so? Yeah, you think you can sure. bench press him? Um, <laughs> if, you laid, if you laid on your back and he laid across you, you think you could lift him up? You How many of you want to see this, huh? Yeah, let's see it. <laughs> Don't want to fuck with Kyle. Here dude, we go. For, for a lesbian, uh, he's got dude confidence. <laughs> Here we go. He's laying down. Kyle is laying flat. Do I go ass to mouth, or how do I do this? I think maybe, maybe you should. Uh, I think maybe you should lay on your back. Yeah, go nice and I, slow. I think he wants this. Uh, he wants you to sit on his face. Try to center your weight. Here we go. Wow! <laughs> Lick that ass! Lick that ass! Wow, he's having some trouble. He's trying hard. Kyle's trying. Hey. Oh! Hey. All right. It is West Hollywood. It is West <laughs> Hollywood. What'll happen? What do you do? A good game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow! You almost Spread had him, sex. Kyle. Almost. Almost. Uh, you, you, are you able to do any special yoga poses since you teach yoga? Is there anything crazy you could do? Like No, not really. I'm, I wow. teach it, but... Wow. What are you of? able to fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. That's year two. 
I love it. I love it. Wow. What else, Kyle? Any other fun facts about you that we should know about? Um, what, 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 what did we find out interesting about you the first time you were on the show? What stood out to you? What was something that we really uh, uh, That I to? don't have interesting yoga poses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm from Michigan. I like shooting stuff, blowing stuff up, I guess. Yeah? What do you, what do you like crackers. to shoot other than your load with a knuckle in your butt? <laughs> Get your watch caught up in somebody's ass. <laughs> oh, I gotta take it off first. <laughs> um, I like uh, deer hunting and squirrel hunting. What? <clears throat> I like deer hunting and squirrel hunting. Oh, cool. You do a lot of uh, deer and squirrel hunting now that you've moved to Los Angeles, or uh, no, not at all. you're the only guy out there just shooting squirrels yeah. on fucking Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> just like, oh my god, look at this psycho. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Well, I mean, you got the show started here tonight. Everything's bumping because of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. There he goes, Kyle Kelly, everybody. And it has begun. There he goes. There you go. Yeah, how about a hand for the band? Always with new songs. Always so gosh darn entertaining. Can we just invite Holtzman every single week? With yeah, yeah, let's do it. New cast member. All right, pulled a hand, uh, pulled another name out of the bucket. Look at this. It's got three exclamation points at the end of it. Make some noise for Simon Zvijanovic. Zvijanovic. Here he is. Simon Zvijanovic. So, uh, has anyone, everyone's been freaking out about Donald Trump's tax returns for like four or five, however long. I want to see Sarah McLaughlin's tax returns. She, is anyone, is anyone thinking that she has one, one-eyed, three-legged dog running around her house? No chance. Um, those commercials are also bullshit. The, uh, <laughs> they don't address the problem, and they're horrible for her album sales. Um, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't think um, they should just be dogs in cages. I think it should be um, two Hell's Angels holding down a, a Rottweiler and a pit bull. Well, uh <laughs> 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 well, in the arms of an angel is overplaying. Uh, I think that would stop people from buying dogs that are bred. Uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> there you go, Simon Bajanovic. Hell yeah! Wow, oh, that was different. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's Did you fucking prepare for this tonight, or what? <laughs> Seems like you were really enjoying yourself. You were laughing. Your laughter, oh. your laughter was a bit contagious. Oh. Got a few chuckles at uh, at yourself laughing. I was I was laughing at her filming me over here. Oh wow! Is that is she, that put my, she put my name in the bucket? And oh. I don't have anything written. Oh, oh wow! Dude, she better be what getting... a cunt! There wow. she is. Unbelievable! Took the words right out of my mouth. One of our least favorite things on the show. Good job, lady. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, that's awesome. She put your name in the bucket and her finger in your ass. Yeah. You look like David Asselhoff. <laughs> it's incredible. Somehow, somehow Simon looks more like a douchey frat boy than the entire band does tonight. And also, he has the exact same hair. Face the fucking audience, Simon. You're on a live show. Also, he has the same haircut as uh, Curtis and uh, Brent. Yeah, but he doesn't know how to street fight, dude. <laughs> uh, doesn't he look like that guy who strangled that girl in Central Park? <laughs> Broke her neck and fucked her dead or something? Uh, <laughs> look at him. So, Simon, how'd you even end up here? Are you a fan of the show or something like that? This is the second time, yeah. Yeah, this is your second time coming to the show. Oh, no, on... Right oh, you, oh, you've been up before. Yeah. Did you sign up that time? Yes. And that, that went so bad that you're like, I'm never doing it again. Yeah. And then you brought this fucking hoe girlfriend with you. 
<laughs> and she thought she'd be funny by signing you up. Is she's, that what happened? Yeah, she's my wife. And oh. Yeah. oh. My wife. Oh. All right, honey, I'm home. Oh. In that case, she's hey. a super cunt. Uh, hey. Wait, you're, you're rich or something, right? Was there something? Oh, you're rich? Oh, you're Bit- cool Bitcoin and your wife's awesome. Bitcoin. You made a lot of money on Bitcoin. No, I made money off, uh, NC- off the NCAA and the school I played for. Oh, what school oh, you played that's for? That's right. That's Illinois, right. yeah. Yeah, now it's coming back yeah. to me. That's right. You <laughs> had uh, you had some injuries, and they paid you to keep your mouth shut about it, and then you talked about it on the number one live podcast in the world. <laughs> now uh, it's all coming And then back. you bought a wife. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if she's ever ready to get with a starter, <laughs> tell her Curtis is here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I enjoyed it, though. I, I thought your presentation was right on. You were a little bit slow <laughs> developing some of the, the, uh, uh, the segues and the punchlines, but <laughs> I see no reason why you shouldn't come back and try it again. <laughs> hey. Thank you. You know what? I like that. And and just bring like, that little whore with you. <laughs> yeah, that pile of slop over there. So, Simon, since you didn't sign up, that's it for you, buddy. You did right, it. You got right. up. You did it. You didn't even, weren't even expecting it. We're going to keep it moving. A lot of people signed up tonight. A lot of people signed up on purpose themselves. So let's get back to this bucket. You guys having fun out there yet, huh? All right. Ooh, this name has a bunch of hearts oh around gosh. it. Put your hands together for Marjan Fathy. Marjan. Oh my God, dude. Oh no. What the fuck is happening Are you fucking serious? Here? Wow, Marjan Fathy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marjan Fadi. I think I pronounced that right. Um, this probably won't be the first or last time I bomb because I'm Middle Eastern. Um, um, so, I think hijabs are the sluttier version of a burqa. Um, and my mama Tarani, my great grandmother, she was no hoe. She had really strong family values. Um, she was one of 12 wives. Um, and uh, the husband was great. He'd be like, you have such pretty eyes. You have such beautiful eyes. I can only see your eyes. Um, and, uh, and <laughs> it was kind of like The Bachelor, except if you didn't get a rose, like, watch your neck. <laughs> um, and uh, everyone would be like, but Marjan, like, weren't those women abused? Like, aren't you concerned about them? And I'd be like, no, they had so many choices. They could spit or swallow or swap. Um, there's 12 of them, so thank you, it's my time. Hey, look at that, Marjan, Marjan? Marjan. I've never, uh, I've, never uh, I've never, enjoyed someone so much after calling them a cunt three minutes beforehand. <laughs> That was incredible. <laughs> that yes. is the most craziest bucket uh, thing yeah. ever, I think. Yeah, wow. yeah that, was, uh, that was wild. So <laughs> I guess this was your own special way of showing your husband who wears the funny pants in this relationship, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you just, yeah, that's what we call burying him. No one even remembers that he existed now after your jokes. Really loved the, uh, loved the beautiful eye burka joke. I mean, really, really, really funny and smart. I've never even heard anything like that before. Uh, and uh, congratulations. So is, this yeah. is your first time doing stand-up comedy? Here, take a step back between uh, Brian and uh, Curtis so that the audience can see you. Hi. There you go. Perfect. There oh. you go. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, so this is your first time doing stand-up? Uh, not my first time. Oh, but, okay. Um, How long have you been doing it for? Um, about six months. Now. Heck yeah! No, I, I like I like your style. You remind me if like Natasha Leggero was a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell us more about you. You're married to uh, to that douchebag over there. <laughs> what else? Yes. Do you have a job? Yes. Yeah. What do you do? Um. So I'm a stylist during the day. I do uh-huh. fashion. Uh huh. What are um, you at night? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't even have asked had you not said during the day. <laughs> um, I just like to do stand up at night. Oh, very improv. cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. What type of stylist are you? Uh, fashion stylist. So oh. if like someone needs help with their wardrobe. Are or you uh, are you off right now? <laughs> 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 wow, that was Chroma Chris making fun of the way she's dressed. 
I, I think uh, I think you're you're wonderful. I think everything is you're set up beautifully. I just don't understand the orthopedic Velcro oh. shoes that you're wearing. Yeah, she's rocking you're those. You got the shoes of, an, of my brother Jay. <laughs> she's rocking those goddamn Lucy Lou's tonight. <laughs> Describe them. What are they? I can they see. are uh, they are white Velcro uh, orthopedic shoes. Oh shit! Yeah, look at those. You fucking look like things. a douchebag with those fucking <laughs> shoes. <laughs> they look like moon bo- moon boots. It's hard to tie my shoes, so. Heck yeah. I wear the Velcro. And would, would you would you consider blowing other comics to 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 get somewhere? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Marjan, Marjan, am I saying that right? Marjan, yes. Marjan. Uh, is there any fun facts about you? you? Have any special hobbies or skills or talents, or um, you ever win a trophy or anything, or <laughs> save somebody's life? Almost Ping pong tricks. So. Yeah. What's your forty? <laughs> yeah. Does Does the magic carpet match the drapes? <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right. So back to that question that I asked you um, uh, about anything about you. Well, so I'm brown. So my parents, um, they didn't allow us to have like dogs or cats. So I guess like a fun fact, um, when I was like five or six, I'd negotiate with my parents and I'd say like, can, I, can we please just have like a bird? Like since we couldn't have a dog or cat. Mm-hmm. And they were like, well. Well, a bird could possibly <laughs> fly into a trade center with bomb <laughs> attached to back. Uh, yeah, sure. We can train bird, Marjan. We get you the parrot from Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you asked for a bird. What they say to that? They're like, if you can catch it, you can keep it. Wow. And then and that's, and that's the advice my dad gave me with women. <laughs> 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 Does does your husband? S- are you happy with your husband? Yes, yes. Simon's wonderful. He's lovely. Uh, so, yeah. uh, did you ever catch the bird? Yeah. You did. I guys, 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 guys. All what? right. The band's being a little bit out of control, a little bit physical during the during the smarter part of the show. Uh, so let's just wind down a little bit. Sorry, Teach. <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm giving you. I'm setting. I'm setting. I'm, this might be all fun and games, but I'm giving you detention for that. I'm telling you right now. Uh, Put some, the mic back. You're not. You're, you're not going to use that anymore tonight. Put the. No, the no, no. You keep it. You keep it. You keep it. Marjan, I got one more question for you. Did you end up yes. catching the bird? Yes, I caught it. Uh huh. And then what happened? I named him Fruity. Uh huh. And then I put a rope around its neck. I mean, a leash. Oh, and, uh, really? Yeah. And, and then my parents were like, uh, they like let him go. And I was so upset. And I was right. like, please, like, what happened? Like, I know he didn't just walk Oh, uh, he's the door. okay. He has 72 virgin <laughs> birds now. Uh, they're like, <laughs> he died for a good cause, Marjan. They're like, they're like, he's living his natural life. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. let a bird go. You don't need bird. They're dirty. They shit everywhere. There's only enough room for us in this house yeah. to do that. Wow, nothing on my dirty Middle Eastern joke. Uh, after, after I have a guitarist play the Star Spangled Banner for you, you go on American on me. So after they let your bird go, uh, after they let your bird go, you married a camel. <laughs> he looks like a camel. Whatever, dude. All right. Well, Marjan, congratulations on your incredible luck. You got pulled Thank out you. of the bucket right after your husband bombed. Incredible, Marjan Fathy. Fathy. Hey, what's that? Brian's giving her a button and a two-dollar bill. Look at that. Hell yeah. That is so cool. Brian all Wilson. Ap- all applicants will get a $2 bill. They're hey. good luck. Hey, I like well, that. Awesome. He's giving away $2 and bills. A, and, a, and a button. And a wow. Brian Holtzman button. That that's is great. so damn cool. You guys, I mean, how exciting is this? The band, Brian Holtzman. <laughs> wow, you are deep in that character over there, huh? I mean, wow. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, pull the name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Mike Spettel. Mike Spettel. Oh, that corner again. There he goes. He's got a good there piece coming. Come on down. Come on down. Heck yeah. Hello. So I just got ghosted for the 11th time this year. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, halfway through June, we're averaging about two per month. There's something seriously wrong with me. Um, I think it's either that or it's like one of those Bruce Wells situations where I've been dead the whole time. Um, <laughs> no, things are, things are looking up. Um, for me, in honor of Pride Month, I recently turned someone gay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was this one guy's first time with another guy. Uh, like, I did that. <laughs> um, no, 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 it's, uh, it's pretty cool. The best part about it is that I'm only two conversions away on my punch card, and I get a free trip to Mykonos, bitch. <laughs> So if anyone would like to help me uh, fulfill that wish, we're going to have a single file line after the show. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mike Spatel. Heck yeah. Look at this. He knows right where to go. Good job, Mike. Right in position. Absolutely. So, Mike, welcome, welcome. First time on the show, right? First time on the show. Heck yeah. I'd remember you. You look like a <laughs> mad professor or something like that. Some type of, like, crazy, uh, crazy man. I am crazy, so. Yeah. Uh, so, Mike, you said that you got ghosted for the 11th time, but what I really want to know about is you said you turned someone gay. Is that true? Yes, it is. How did you do that? Um, have you seen me? <laughs> um, no, dude, yep. get, dude, get away from me, dude! I don't want to turn gay, dude. <laughs> um, no, is, wait, just, is that like contagious? <laughs> <laughs> don't mind him; he's a, he's a, he's the quarterback for the football team. Oh, yeah. So well, been there, done that. Right. So you you are gay, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, I love it. You own that shit. Hell yeah! <laughs> it's uh, this why, why he's the captain. Heck yeah. <laughs> Dude, from fullback to bareback. <laughs> <laughs> you playing wide receiver tonight? Whoa. I don't know. Am I? <laughs> Wait, are we doing something gay right now? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how you turned someone gay, Mike. I'm excited to know about this. Um, so I just met up with the... I was in San Francisco. I met up with this one guy that I went to college with, and we went out to a couple bars, and then eventually then he was just like, yeah, uh, I've always kind of had an attraction to you, and then he kissed me on the cheek, Kiss me closer to the cheek, uh, and then he kissed me on the lips. I think we've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had enough of this, all right? I just got a charming personality. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, my I mean, goodness. Sucking cock going to be part of this show? <laughs> <laughs> For an additional fee? My sure hope so. so. So your buddy that you turned gay, I, I got to know, like, was, was so what happens? Is he on bottom or top? Like, how does that work? What did he have in his, what did, what, what did he want? Uh, honor, honor, <laughs> uh, the first time you do it, you have to top. It's, it's part of the rules. You had to top him. No, no, he has to. Oh, yeah, yeah. right. Dude, you put, new mean, you put new meaning to myth busters, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, uh, if you don't top for the first time, that's called being the away team. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, so he fucked you. Yes. My goodness. That is incredible. And does anything ever stand out to you when you turn someone gay? Is there something a new gay guy does that a regular gay guy doesn't? Oh, uh, this was actually my Is it first like a car? Like, does it have a different smell or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it smells like it that dude's fingers. It did have a distinct smell that night, yes. Yeah. Like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you got a future in the Navy or perhaps a penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Down Periscope. So, Mike, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about a little over, about a year now. About a regularly. year? Heck yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm from Youngstown. 1313 oh, nice. Cocksucker yeah. Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how long have you lived in Los Angeles? Uh, going on two years at the beginning of the month. Two years. Right here in WeHo, right? Yes. Absolutely. What gave it away? Yeah. Why? Why go anywhere else <laughs> when you, you could uh, live in the Mecca? Well, I, I think it's it's nice that you're open about it, and I like that. I don't like the the fags that try to come <laughs> off as straight. <laughs> it's disappointing when you find out your best friend's a cocksucker when you're not around. Right. Right. <laughs> At least he's honest. <laughs> Question for you. I had to write it down. What is Mykonos? I've never heard of that. Mykonos. Mykonos. It's, Mykonos. It's um a Greek like resort 
town. Oh. It's uh, you remember that? It was that video of like Lindsay Lohan dancing blackout drunk last year. No, and, only yeah. gay guys know about that okay. shit, dude. <laughs> she know your audience. Know your audience. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, so that's cool. It's going to be the only fag on the list. I don't know. I don't here. know. It's a random bucket. <laughs> Anything can happen. Uh, so what do you do for work, Mike? I do accounting consulting. And cock sucking. <laughs> <laughs> I like to turn straight guys into fags. How long is this going to go on with this fucking guy? He's making me uncomfortable here. I'm thinking I'm a closet fucking fag now. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. The glasses, too. It's creepy, right? <laughs> I want to fucking suck your cock. <laughs> I mean, bro, you look like you're in a gay western right now, so you can't say anything. <laughs> Whoa. He's taking shots at the throat. <laughs> Give him a... He left you hanging. He's a, court, he's a douchey quarterback sometimes. Sexual predator. That's what he is. He's a sexual fucking predator. <laughs> Uh, one last question for you, Mike. You said you got ghosted for the eleventh time this year. Yes. Now, now, what, what, do, uh, how does that happen? Especially, I feel like gay guys just want to fuck. So, how you, do you get? Ghosted? Usually, they just want to fuck, and then after that, it's like, oh, so they fuck cricket, you, like, and then they ghost you. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's not real. I don't think yeah. that's really ghost. Ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, that makes sense. Yeah, ghosting is when you fuck somebody and then you never hit them up again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. What I got everybody confused. does. <laughs> wow. So why do you think it is that nobody uh, that you don't get the call back after the audition? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, usually I usually I'm good for like I, I usually have one and then two, but uh -huh. then after the second one it just cuts out. I think that they kind of just get to really know the real me. Well, and, the blood tests yeah. are faster nowadays. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> when you say they get to know the real you, what is it that they that you think they find out that they find unlikable? Uh, that I really have n the personality of a dead squirrel. You do. Yes. Like like like, like can you give us an example of the most boring thing about you? Um, I'm an Lousy account fuck. I'm, I'm an accounting consultant. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You look like a Forrest Griffin if the forest he was in was gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a pretty deep reference there. Forrest the Griffin. The podcast listeners will love it. Forrest Griffin from uh, 2009 UFC fame. <laughs> um, well, Mike, uh, fun times, dude. Very interesting stuff. Thank you. Rock and roll. There he goes, Mike Spatel. <laughs> Been doing Santa for a year. Mike Spatel. He's on Twitter at Spike underscore Mattel, Simon Jvijanovic, and Marjan Fathy. Fathy. Maybe we'll pick a tranny out of there next. Hey, oh, could happen. <laughs> could happen. Uh, it's a wild show. <laughs> this is, uh, Have you ever experimented when you were younger, Brian? Did you ever experiment with, uh, you know, when you're on drugs or with a guy? or you just, know? just between lunch periods. <laughs> I'm interested. Somebody go in the back and just beat the fuck out of that guy. <laughs> um, just know, beat the fucking living. Knock the glasses right off his fucking gay fucking head. You know, Brian, I'm actually surprised you're talking like this since don't you ha actually, and I don't know if it's okay that I bring this up, oh, yeah. but don't you, have a, uh, don't you have a gay son? I think that's I'm <laughs> proud of the boy. <laughs> I treat him just like anybody else just because he's got that crazy gene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Uh, Mr. Holtzman, it would be an honor if I could wear one of those pins. Oh, wow, look at that. You want to toss him a pin? He's going to represent back Can I get, I can get up? Can I get up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can get up. My goodness. Do you remember do you remember what it was like when you found out uh, when you found out your son was gay? Like how did he come out to you? Yeah, can I be your son? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was very frightening. We were yeah. having a celebration. I think it was Thanksgiving, uh, yeah. and uh, Mitzi Shaw was there, and Paulie Shaw, and we were all gathered around the table, and uh, my wife was breastfeeding the child, and we kind of had a figure. We weren't sure, but we had some kind of uh, indicators, perhaps, and uh, he got loose from my wife's breast, and he just fell right on my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> you could cut the tension in the room with a tension-cutting knife. It was unbelievable. <laughs> They cleared the table. Bob, Uncle Bob went and got the video camera. I mean, it was. So I unleashed the bottom of my zipper and just pulled out my penis. And he saw the shiny part on the head and he jumped on it like a fish on a fish hook. <laughs> and I don't want to take any more time with this story. Maybe we should move on. Uh, woo! 
Oh, this is fun getting to do all these crazy road shows and come back and really just get to enjoy ourselves with the guests, man. So, uh, such an honor to have you here, Brian. Pulled another name out of the bucket. Your next comedian with an uninterrupted 60 seconds goes by the name of Evan Eames. Evan E-A-M-E-S. Come on down. Come on down. Come on. One more time for Evan, everybody. Woo! Excellent. Thank you. Surprised. I'm surprised. I always get surprised. Sometimes I get surprised about, like, stuff just normal in my life. Like, uh, sometimes I get surprised when I don't have diarrhea. So uh, it's one of those ones where I'm like, oh, my God, my whole... I should definitely... I haven't been really healthy about my eating. I've only been having ice cream sandwiches and diarrhea for the last five days. I should definitely have diarrhea right now and so I go and I you know sometimes I'll see I'm like what why is that there and so you got to be like a detective you know you grab like the plunger you're like maybe if I break it open spill out like chocolate lava cake it's all right I don't mind ruining chocolate lava cake for everybody in here like that movie and chef I, but that's what chocolate lava cake looks like is diarrhea trapped in a poop anyway <laughs> it's molten wow right, everybody evan eames my goodness wow welcome welcome to the show evan so uh so you poop Everybody does. Yes, they do. Step away from the talent. <laughs> Ask him if he's straight so before we start. Are, are I'm pretty straight? sure. I don't know. I didn't meet that guy. Could maybe pretend. <laughs> okay, there's your fart noise for the episode. There it yeah. was. <laughs> Red band. I Just couldn't it. wait to do it. So, Evan, <laughs> is, you just started stand-up comedy? No. Oh, wow. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, seven years. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. You, what? We didn't go with the strongest one. <laughs> My God. Jesus Christ. I know, it's awful, right? What the fuck's happening? Tell us about it. That Wait. one was just a... Uh, How long? It was just Seven years he's been doing stand-up. He should have graduated four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. And uh, how long have you been inspiring people on Instagram to uh, okay, wake up early that. and get to work? What's that fucking guy's name? Hmm? Ah, forget it. Don't Some guy that you look like. It's like, you can Peanut do check. it. Heard it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because you fucking look just like him. And he's also not funny. <laughs> uh, so, Evan, how have you been doing this seven years? What's going on? You do it rarely? No, no, no. I, uh, I've been in Shanghai. China. Sh- Shanghai. What were, you, what were you doing in Shanghai? I was working as a teacher and... Fucking little boys. <laughs> fucking little boys. <laughs> where, were you, uh, where were you teaching in Shanghai? I taught third grade. Ah. And international school. You know how to speak Chinese? Just a little bit. Can you give us an example? Can you do your set in Chinese? I cannot do my Can set Can you just in say a, a sentence in Chinese? Can uh, you say, I fucking bombed tonight? Uh, in Chinese? Uh, <laughs> wow. Very good. Why can't we get more than one fortune cookie at a fucking Chinese food restaurant? It's, it's the commodity. You know? it's like small. Good answer, Evan. Good answer. Uh, so you've been doing it seven years. And what do you do for work now? Uh, I work at a gym. You work at a gym. Wow, the second guy that works at a gym that looks like he doesn't fucking work at a gym. <laughs> it's incredible. What are you guys, the receptionists at these gyms? What's Jim's last name? (laughs) (laughs) What do do you do at the gym, Evan? Pilates? I'm a personal trainer. Personal trainer. You specialize in any type of personal training? Kettlebells. (laughs) What? Whoa, Brian. Kettlebells? (laughs) (laughs) Brian. Brian's Uh, holding his own neck. Are you like like secretly ripped underneath that shirt or something? I'm okay. Really? Would you mind showing this audience? I'm interested yeah. to know. He says he specializes in kettlebells. Who wants to see his asshole? Show us your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> no, it's That's okay. ripped, all right. I just want to see what you have going on under there. I, I'm not buying this personal trainer specializing in kettlebells thing. Wow, look oh, at that. Oh, that looks like a cocksucker to me. That's a cocksucker to me. Look at that. You gotta be. What's the tattoo? You gotta on be your a fact to get that on your body. Come on. That's a lot of sit ups. 
You have a door knocker on your chest. Wow, that's the second gayest thing that's been on the stage tonight. It's a door knocker because the back door is always open. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a little uh, little doorbell you can ring on the backside. My goodness. So you took some time off during that seven years. That makes sense. In Shanghai, you weren't really doing stand-up. No, no, no. I own a, I am like a co-founder of a Chinese uh, comedy promotion group. Really? Co-founder of a mic. Chinese promotion? promotion group there, yeah. Oh, very cool. And, uh, Sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> it does. It's really bad. What do, you, what do you like to do for fun? Tell us more about you. You seem like you have some creepy hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> you canoe oh. backwards or something like that? Like, I only canoe upstream on personal I'm trainer. Just, I just I swim everywhere. No, I like uh, go out and do fucking hiking and stuff like that. Yeah, what else? Well, other than hiking, which is literally the Everybody most boring answer. Everybody does yeah. that. I uh, play guitar. Yeah. And I do, I try to do stand up and then to you're, fail you're when adorable. I come up here. You, you married? I am married. How long have you been married for? Uh, about a year and a half. Year and a half. Where'd you marry her at? I am home. China. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. I figured uh. it out. And from Shanghai to Shanghai, you know what I'm talking about, dude? Fucking. You went from Poontang to Ching Chang. <laughs> is it true it's sideways? Is it up and down? What, what is it? I haven't figured that part out yet. I only go ass. My goodness. And you, and you, met, you met your wife when you were teaching her third grade? Oh. It's a different culture there. Yeah, I love it. She looked old for her age. <laughs> mature. She's very mature. Wow. So interesting. And now she lives here with you? Yes. Wow. Does she speak English? Yeah. What does she do? She, uh, she works at a Nail salon. freight forwarding company. <laughs> freight forwarding? Freight forwarding, like, a, like logistics. She gives hand jobs. Yes. Oh, very good. Yeah. An wow. A, a white guy with a fucking Asian wife. I can't believe it. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be a thing. What yeah. A what yeah. Ha, ha, ha. My goodness. She so fuck everybody here for us, bro. Oh, she probably, <laughs> yes. She's good at that. Wow. Evan, was the transition easy when she moved in with you? Uh, like, uh, you know, can you tell us anything about that? <laughs> oh, looks like I finally fucking found something to talk about with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I met, I, I had a crush on her, and then I met her up with her at a pool, and then we, I was, she had a shitty roommate, and I said, hey, do you want to, like, move out of your roommate's place and move in with me. And she was like, yeah, sure. And then I went to Edinburgh for a month, and then I came back, and she didn't move out. Uh, she didn't move into your place? She moved into my place, but uh, she didn't move out of my place. Oh. I was letting her stay there while I was in Edinburgh. Hell yeah. And then she uh, didn't leave. Yeah. Did you try to get her to leave? Or did, were I, you I like, mean, I invested I so was, much in toilet it cameras? Was, it was mad. No, normally, normal- Sometimes it's, like, really good. And you're yeah. like, I forgot that six months passed. I can't believe she stayed. Normally, Chinese people are very good at takeout. Yes. <laughs> Did you have to marry the whole fucking family, like they say? <laughs> yes. That's a bitch. That's Fuck a, the family. That's a big you know? Luckily, her dad's dead, so it's okay. It's a small family wow. now. What happened to him? How did he die? He, he car wreck. Car accident. Wow. Who would have guessed an Asian in a car your seat accident? Out of the way, your seatbelt. My goodness. Is there any bigger stereotype? Oh, he choked on an egg roll, Tony. Uh, <laughs> All right, car wreck. Man, that's some interesting stuff. Well, Evan, uh, we got it out of you. You did right. it, dude. Okay. Sign up again next time. Get I will. some redemption, dude. If you have seven years of experience, do a different minute. Step back from that ledge, my friend. All right. Me something good. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, wasn't it? Pulled another name out of the bucket. Uh, put your hands together for Bruce Lerner. Come on down, Bruce. Here we go. Come on down. Bruce Lerner. Here he comes. Here he comes. All right, come on down. From the audience side, that's always interesting. Come on, make it good and loud for Bruce Lerner, everybody. Great to be here, comedy store. Fuck yeah! We catch my breath in that run. All right. Um, I live in kind of the rough part of Oregon. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, man. There's this house across the street. 
they do lots of drugs there, prostitution. I saw these teenagers standing outside on the driveway, and I went up to them and I said, you kids, get out of here. You're too young and too beautiful to be getting drugs from that house. Get the hell out of here. And they were like, dude, we're just waiting for a ride. I was like, all right. I went inside my apartment, and I thought, hey, at least I tried. At least I tried to do something good for the world. The problem was the window was still open, and I heard outside, dude, did you know we could get drugs at that house? It's my fucking life, man. And then, no, I'm saying, ah, this is. Anyway, Amazon, Amazon is uh, trying. All right, that's it. Heck yeah, dude. Absolutely. Bruce Lerner, this is your first time on the show, correct? Yes. It was awesome, dude. Thank you. you hit it right, uh, right from the beginning. Rough part of Thank Oregon, you. got a big laugh. Uh, wiped, uh, wiped the, wiped the room clean of uh, the stink left by Evan Eames' seven years of disappointment. You've been doing stand up a while? Yeah, a little over ten years. A little over wow. ten years. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. fucking awesome. Yeah, All thanks. up in Oregon? No, I started in Boston, moved to L.A., um, lived there for two and a half years, moved to Oregon five years ago. Why did you move to Oregon? I couldn't handle it, Tony. <laughs> I love yeah. it when people say my name in the answer. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you, you couldn't handle L.A.? I couldn't handle it, man. What does that mean? Um, the noise and the crowdedness and the cost of living. I checked my part, price of my old apartment. It went from 1000 to 1600 on the same street. 1000 to 1600 in five years. In five years, yeah. Yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, you could have, uh, did you ever think about just moving just outside LA and maybe, well, you know, that would, that would help with the, the noise was the first thing you mentioned. What part of town did you live in? Uh, Hollywood. Yeah. Well, Hollywood. there you go, man. Yeah. You could yeah. also live in the middle of nowhere, 10 minutes away. And, All right. Yeah. There were psychedelics involved oh. uh, up in Oregon. I said, I got to go back and get some more of that shit. Is yeah. that when you bought those shoes? Yeah. <laughs> For those of you listening to the Fucking podcast. Like, yeah. yeah. Wearing, go to what a movie the fuck is happening down there? Um... No. What, Tell them. What'd you Tell nah, them. nah, nah. What'd you ask him, Brian? I missed it. Have you ever been to a movie theater with a firearm? A f- uh, no. Good question. Uh, wow. So you do psychedelics a lot? I did. I, went, I moved up there to do a psychedelics, and I, f- I fell in love with the, the geography out there. The true. geography. Was that on psychedelics that you fell in love with the geography? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You just love Oregon. I and just love Oregon. I don't blame you. A lot of yeah. a lot of my uh, a lot of my friends love Oregon. A lot of my meth head friends love Oregon. Yeah, definitely. Yes. definitely. There's a slight stereotype for that, right? A lot yeah. of meth up there. Shitload of meth up there. Yeah. 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 You, you like meth? I never done meth. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Come on, look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fair you enough. S- you said you were from the rough part of Oregon. There's yeah. 37 people from Detroit out here to kick your ass. I know. <laughs> I know. It was, I say. Um, I say it's a local joke because I live in this town and uh, and fucking uh, it, it it's funny to say it's rough because it's not yeah. a rough town at all. Right. Yeah, but they don't know this town, so. Right. Yeah. Hey, why did you call those kids beautiful in your joke? It's <laughs> a good good question. Um. Very good question. Is that is that your? Because I, like, I was with you like the like the dare program. You're too young for this, but then you slipped in that beautiful, and I was like. <laughs> What is happening right now? <laughs> I don't know what is happening exactly. Curt- Curtis is Curtis is clearly preparing for the uh, talent show. <laughs> all right, all right. Every time you play this, it seems to put him in a trance of some kind. <laughs> uh, Get off me, Daddy! Wow. So, Bruce, how do you make money? Um, I'm a caregiver. A for caregiver. A caregiver from memory. A what? Care. Are we talking about kids again? No. I don't like children. Oh. I just didn't want them. It, that wasn't even true. My girlfriend said that, and I turned it into a joke, so that's oh, why. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what, does it, what do you do caregiving exactly? Um, and by the way, since you said you don't like children, now yeah. it, it feels like you do. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. <Brian>. Yeah. <laughs> you, you look like if Adam Sandler was a pedophile. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's definitely an odd-looking fellow. Is that head... <laughs> The same head that came with your body? <laughs> uh, Doesn't he look yeah. like his head belongs on somebody else's body? Yeah. What a weird looking motherfucker this yeah. guy. It, it's because I'm Russian. Yeah, you're Russian. Yeah. 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 yeah, I never thought I'd see Joseph Stalin again. But Wait, which one, which one of us? 
Fuck you, man. <laughs> maybe, uh, may- fuck yeah. M- maybe next time you can put in some more jokes. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely, I can tell you're Russian. In fact, I, I could tell by the shape of your head that your parents lived near Chernobyl, for yeah. sure. He looks, like, he looks like that guy from the first Blade Runner, Leon. When they're asking him, when they're asking him questions, Leon, do you remember that? Not the second uh, Blade Runner. That was a piece of hot, steamy shit. The first Blade Runner. Look at him, Leon, Leon, Leon. Uh, That's insane. It uh, does. Oh, shit. I thought I was a fucked up dresser. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah. So, Bruce, tell us more about you. What do you do for fun up there? What do uh, you. Uh, what I do? I uh, go out on the lake, inflatable kayak, smoke some weed out there. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Go snowboarding. Oh, that's so um, cool. Yeah, it's nice. That's why I moved. The nature is really nice. Okay. Yeah, the nature's yeah. nice. You have enough money to have a place that yeah. you like. Uh, you live by yourself. With my girlfriend, dog and cat. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of dog? Dog, uh, dachshund. Half what kind dachshund. of girlfriend? Fuck girlfriend half Mexican. Fuck half Mexican. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look yeah. They're the best. The best. Yeah. Why? Yeah, dude. Put some cream on that burrito, dude. <laughs> Why, uh, why, why, why do you prefer Mexican? Why do you say they're the best? What is it about her that, uh, that you like so much, specifically? Um, she just treats me right. Nice yeah. person. I love that. Um, she's, she's half German, so she makes nachos in the oven. Damn. <laughs> wow. Half Mexican, That's half awesome. German. Is that a German thing? <laughs> Heck yeah. I fucking love this guy, dude. You want to be yeah. in our frat, dude? Fuck incredible. yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. You're in, dude. Yeah. You just got to yes. suck my dick. All right. Ten years All he's right. been doing it. What a difference three years make. It just goes to show that if, after year seven, if you don't quit, you can be as funny as, uh, as Bruce up here. Such an awesome set. Thank Such you, a fun you. interview. Thank you, man. Thank uh, you. Good energy. Good energy. Good, 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 good energy. How long are you in Los Angeles for? So this is my last night. I've been here at the comedy store last three nights, last four nights. That is so yeah. cool. Five so nights. Pick a fucking right. night. Did you, you flew here? Uh, I took the train actually, taking uh, the train back. That is so cool. I love trains. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. Well, yeah. I'm so glad that you got pulled out of the bucket. Thank Fucking you, awesome Thank set. You. So Thank good. You. So cool. Uh, w- 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 that's, that's amazing. One last thing, Tony. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I told you this before. This is the craziest thing I ever did in my whole life. This might, not everyone might know what I'm talking about. Taking acid with Eddie Whitehead Jr. Oh, wow. Yeah, we know Eddie Whitehead Jr. Yeah. You did that up in Oregon? Yeah. You Is he him? okay? Wow. You found him I don't in a know. Car? I don't know. Shout out. How Eddie long ago was that? Five years. Wow. Eddie Whitehead Jr. is the first person I met in all of comedy. Uh, I went to sign up uh, for the open mic here, and that, that, that day I was extremely early because I had been preparing for months to go to the comedy store, showed up by myself, and... Uh, and I was the first person there, and he, uh, <laughs> and he was. Uh, oh, I'm awake. I'm awake. And he was, he was here because he was homeless, and uh, now he just disappears and Did, comes back. You just thought he was Samuel L. Jackson, didn't you? The whole time, he looks just like Samuel L. Jackson, by the way. Anyway, anyway uh, <laughs> so uh, how about one more time for uh, for Bruce Lerner, everybody, all the way from Oregon. He's back on the train tomorrow. Good job, Bruce. Ten years in the game, signed up, got up. That so nacho much. joke was hilarious. Yeah, he's got it. Look at that. It's going back. It's, it's I thought I was the first one you met. <laughs> How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? You all right? Come here. I love it. All right, pull the name out of the bucket. One word name. Let's see if they're here. Put your hands together for Toby with an I. T O B I. Toby, come on over here. Here they come, I think. Here we go. Come on down. Okay. Is that Toby? Uh, that's a person nope. leaving. Oh, it's a big girl. Big girl. Oh. Here she comes. Big girl. Big girl. One more time for Toby, everybody. So uh, it turns out um, once you go black, you do go back. Um, but I'm single right now, and I'm really taking that time to, um, to, to ask myself the important questions like, Toby, 
Why were you dating a homeless man who had no job, no car, and really no future? But um, he was so sweet, though. He would uh, donate his blood so that he could take us out on dates. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but uh, that's only if he had money left over after um, buying his malt liquor and cigarette. Can you guys believe that he's only 30% black? Uh, so my... Uh, <laughs> So I was talking to this bitch recently, and I was like, show me your tits. And she uh, she showed me, and I don't actually think that my mom's a bitch, but uh, I just wish that I had her tits because she doesn't have any nipples. But that explains the hair because obviously I got my dad's. Heck yeah, Toby, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> First time on the show. Welcome, Toby. Thank you. Welcome. How are you? When you answer everything, make sure you talk right into the tip of that microphone because it, uh, it was a little bit hard to hear uh, some of your set. Um, which, by the, I could actually hear it, and I'm actually glad that a lot of people couldn't hear it. Uh, actually, I think... I loved it. I loved every word of it. I loved it. I just really love it. I've yeah. never seen this I mean, like this. I'm not woke or anything, but that was low-key racist. <laughs> Man... Your name's Toby? Yeah. Yes. Did you do stand up when it was Kunta Quinte? <laughs> Honest go. question. An another super topical reference from Joel Berg tonight. <laughs> Hitting him with that. Brent, what did I tell you about reading books? I grew up in a group home. <laughs> group home? I don't have a last name. So, Toby, you're, uh, you, you just recently started stand up? This is my first time. First time ever. There you go. Heck yeah. Like a That's right. So uh, is this something you've always wanted to do? Uh, it's kind of becoming something. Heck yeah. yeah. It's kind of becoming something. That I want to do. Isn't that a Michael Jackson so song? No. It's kind of becoming something. <laughs> uh, so uh, what have you been doing with your life up until this point? Uh, well, I'm a single mom. Single mom? Yeah. How old's your kid? Uh, 11 and 7. Eleven and seven. So you really, Ugh. and you're a single mom. So you really have been with black guys before. That's so cool that you talk about what, uh, what you actually know. <laughs> is that true? Is that the, uh, is your baby daddy, uh, the thirty percent black guy that you were talking about? No. Oh. No. Oh. He was, uh, he was Hispanic. Oh. <laughs> And that's the that's the that's the dad of your children. Correct. And they live with you here in Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, I live in Rancho Cucamonga. Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a respiratory therapist. Respiratory therapist. Wow. There's yeah. some real fans of respiratory it's, therapy it's, over there. We're the black sheep of the hospital. It's the black sheep of what? Of the hospital. Oh, well. Why is that? Hey, uh, I don't want to sound stupid, but what is that? Help people breathe. We help people breathe. Yeah, but like that's a job. Yeah. Yeah. So like sleep apnea and stuff like that, or uh, allergies. I mean that's, that's part of it. People who need like ventilatory support or oxygen. Seems like issues. you would. It seems like you could also specialize in uh, helping them not breathe. You ever just let a boob pop out or something like that and just watch a patient die? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. I did have one, one dad, old. um, I was, like, facing the patient, and the guy was behind me, and I heard him say, like, God, I miss the times when you could just slap a girl's ass and be okay. <laughs> so do I, so do I! Do you wear, like, a How does it feel to be today? here with him right now? <laughs> do you wear, like, a, you have, like, a, uh, you have to wear, like, scr regular scrubs, or, uh, scrubs, you have, like, yeah. a hot nurse outfit that you wear, or something like that? <laughs> Just regular old scrubs. All right. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, two years. Two that years. is so cool. Uh, and so that is interesting. And you chose to start here. You listen to the show? I do listen to the show, yeah. That's fun. Um, yeah. Um, wow. Uh, what else about you, Toby? It must be hard raising an 11 and a 7-year-old on your own. <laughs> What's going on, Brian? Right? I need my tongue in my fucking mouth over here. Isn't she lickable? Come on. <laughs> Did you ever give a hand job to one of the people who couldn't breathe? Am I the only one thinking that? Come on! You, you laughed at the fag, now you don't want to... 
Oh, wow. So, Toby, uh, that's a lot of fun. You have an 11 and a 7-year-old. Are you, are you still single? Yeah. Um, so, do you, uh, you go on dates a lot? No. No. You d- busy, busy person. Yeah, Working. busy person. So, what do you do for fun? What's something? When, uh, what's your like favorite uh, hobby or something like that? Uh, I. Okay, <laughs> only one of those an episode for sure. It's your thing. Uh, so it, it's kind of hard to like find a hobby when you have like kids and a full time job and like that's your full you know life. Yeah, I just kind of like work out and um, take my dogs for a walk. And then lately, I've just been like trying to find different things to try out. I love that. Let's check in with Chroma Chris over there. Yeah, it's Cody. Yeah, Cody Chris. Cody Stevenson. Hey, if you ever wanted to like join a team, we're always looking for a tight end. (laughs) Hey. Fuck yes. (laughs) Dude, suck our dicks, Red Band. Don't stand up on your high tower with your sound effects, bitch. Wow. <laughs> so, Toby, what, uh, what, hey, don't do that. Please have awesome. your attention. Awesome. All right, all right. Awesome. So, Toby, what are the 11 and 7 uh, year old doing right now? Uh, I, Where's our mom? <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. No, right. they're with their dad right now. Oh, they're with their dad. Yeah. Heck yeah. Why That's does he cool. beat us? <laughs> So I guess comedy's important. Okay. Here's this black chick on the couch. That's not mommy. Okay, okay. <laughs> wham, 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 wham. All right, all right. Oh, my God. Chroma <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris just did a shot of alcohol. <laughs> see, about to bong, you see about to bong another beer? What is going on here? These guys are in character. It doesn't matter. I still have eyebrows. Oh, come on. Sing it like a champ. (laughs) Pour it faster, Joel. It's a bong. Joel, pour the beer in there. (laughs) Hey, look at that. Oh, she swallowed it. (laughs) A little something for a little something for everybody to jerk off to later. (laughs) What a slut. Well, Toby, I think it's so cool. I mean, yes, it is hard, hard, hard uh, your first time to do this. I, I, we're really not exactly sure what even I think you were sort of talking about, but I'm sure there's something in there somewhere. Maybe come back, sign up, and try it again sometime. How about that? Did you have fun? Yeah, I had fun. I was just a little scared. A little scared? A little, little scared, yeah. Well, of course. You're just fine. You're just, just fine. Yeah. It should be scary. You're in the main room of the comedy store on a show where people don't know when they're going up or if they're going up. I think you handled it like a champ. Fun interview. Good set. There you go. Toby, everybody. Your very first time doing stand-up comedy. Yeah, man. Everything's moving along smoothly. We have a bathroom that's uh, double gender or whatever. What they call it? In case anybody's not sure which bathroom. <laughs> double gender. Use. That's it. Uh, gender neutral. I think they call it. If you're not sure what, where you want to go, so be careful. And shut double your gen- fucking cell phones off, too. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. How many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when I pull somebody out of the bucket and they do bad on this show? Wow, look at that. See, they like, they like blood and guts, these people. They're animals. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Milan Patel. Milan Patel. Milan. Here he comes. Hey. Hey, what's going on? You guys good? All right, I'm good. I had something kind of weird happen to me today. I don't know if it's weird. You guys tell me what you think, all right? I was at the grocery store, and the lady finished checking out my items, and then she looked at me, and she was like, all right, 9-11, which, yeah. You know, when you look like me, that's not what you want to hear. At the, that's not the weird part. The weird part is that I looked at the screen, and that wasn't my total, so... <laughs> It wasn't even that close. 
My total was like $9.57, so she just saw the nine, and then she looked at me, and then her brain was like, okay, don't say 9-11, don't say 9-11, don't say 9-11. She was like, all right, 9-11, whoops, uh-oh. And like, you know, I know the slogan for 9-11 is never forget, but her slogan should be different. Her slogan should be like, hey, maybe let it go a little bit, Carol, or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Not that, but I'm done, all right. Yeah, look at that, Melon Patel, very funny. Funny stuff, man. Thanks. You've been doing stand-up a while? Uh, a few years now. A few yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, all here in Los Angeles? No, I'm from Portland. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Do you know, uh, have you ever seen a... Uh, Hell no. Uh, no, you don't know... Uh, <laughs> Whatever you're yeah. about to say, the answer is no, dude. You don't know Bruce Lerner? No, I don't know Bruce Lerner. <laughs> oh, I like your disgust about the entire situation. I don't like, I don't like this show, to be honest. I don't like the show. <laughs> Why do you and, sign? Uh, why do you sign up then? I've never been here before. I don't know who what this is. I don't know who any. So I why did why did stick with me here? No. Why did you sign up? This felt like good exposure from uh, that one joke that I wanted to do. So, but it, <laughs> he knows me. I'm oh yeah, no, I do know. I don't. Jo I like Joel though. Uh -huh. I like Joel. A lot. But you've never seen the show. Never seen the show. You've never been know. to the show. Joel was like, "Come on down. You're not gonna like anybody but me. But you should still come." And right, he, he was right. He was yeah. Right what did he that. say about Curtis? Uh, who's Curtis? <laughs> what the fuck is Curtis? I don't know who you are. I don't know. Who I don't know who I am either. What a friendly. Sometimes. What a. Yeah. What a friendly yeah. fucking guy, huh? Yeah. And you? How long have you, you hated hey, yourself? Hey, you let me talk. Hey, fuck you! you no, fuck you! Fuck me! Fuck you! Fuck me! Fuck you! Fuck me! Fuck you! I'll fucking, I'll fucking. Yeah, no, I'll no, put you in my hey, pocket hey, hey, and hey, jack you. Hey, hey, you, you, you go, you go, you go. You say what you want to say. Go ahead, my. No, you go, Mitch. Foreign friend, <laughs> Milan. You look like you moved here from Sicily like yesterday. You look. That's what you look like. Nailed it. Is he mock? You're killing it, Milan. Very I know good. I'm killing it, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting the love that I want right now. Well, wait, I'm wait. Well, can I just say, we really liked you until you just started saying that you didn't like any of us. I yeah. know. I'm, you I, seem, you seem I know, very I know, I know. So. <laughs> I got... You I seem know. very self-destructive, Milan. I mean, you get what you put out. You get what you put out. Listen, I got defensive. Dude, I, we're going to... I got I defensive. I got defensive. Dude, right? I don't want to have to do this, but you're going in a locker right now, man. <laughs> 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 My goodness. So, Milan, uh, <laughs> the show clearly angers you. I like how I'm getting bullied by a guy with a saxophone right now. <laughs> like, he's like, I'm about to fucking kill you, dude. See, I like this guy again. Yeah. I love see? it. <laughs> this is what you got to do. You got to come up here. You got to wave your, you know, your, uh, what, I don't know, whatever. What? Sorry. What you got you to just be funny. It's good. Uh, yeah. Just out of curiosity, how far east of here were you performing when you made friends with this guy, Joel Berg? Pretty fucking <laughs> far, Most actually. Yeah, Silver yeah. Lake? Which yep, exactly. You nailed it. There you go. All mm. right. I could fucking tell. Why, why, why half, do you say that? Because it's half written jokes and a bad attitude. That's a full. <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years, dude. And I, I, did, know, I, know, I know fucking Silver Lake fucking I just just half to size do, dorks when I, I see I just wanted it. to do this so I could just say I don't like anything there, right. you know? Exactly. Well, I You're like, too I hip for a show that you signed up for. <laughs> Like I, that's yeah, inexcusable. But, uh, but I did good on the show, so that what does that say? You I don't did, know. You man. did. You, you did. But it, but it, but it was it was cutie pie, and it uh, was only thirty five seconds. Your nine eleven joke, and then you stretched it for another twenty. Like, ooh, wow, it wasn't even the thing. Bibbity boop. You just kept going <laughs> after the thing, after the two main things. You got two laughs in sixty seconds, and then you just. I, I've never heard the term uh, nine eleven and cutie pie in the same sentence, but. Well, that's because you only perform on the east side of Los Angeles. I if you know. came out to where all the paid comedians perform you would see a lot of jokes have, that you've never seen I have before. I have gotten paid oh before. you have yeah. very good what what type of tea bags did they pay you in down there in uh, <laughs> it was, uh, like, was it Earl Grey or chamomile <laughs> or perhaps a free smoothie and a pancake yeah Anyway, I'll yeah. let you go though, since you're mi a miserable little fool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. I thank you guys. I actually did have a lot of fun. I was just. Oh was well, great. in that case, I, I fucking liked your set. Ah, hey, uh, no, I'm you. kidding. I did have a good time. I did have a good time. Can I just say? <laughs> yeah. I was rooting for you the whole time. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I, w I was too, Milan. We all we all liked you until you this specifically said you didn't like the show, and then I, we then yeah. we all have to defend our thrones. You this know. This is gonna make <laughs> open mics really awkward for me. 
<laughs> no, I like Joel. Like I uh, like we, we, Joel. we heard Dude, you the first Dude, but what about time. Curtis? Who's Curtis? I don't I'm know who Curtis. that is. All right. And there I'm was no go. reason to make fun of me. Really was no I, reason I know. to make fun of me. I know, know, I know, I know. I'm know. i sorry. Can I just say to everybody here? I'm, shut up. <laughs> Can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Can I just say one thing? Yes. I am sorry, okay? Uh -huh. I am sorry for my attitude. Uh-huh. And I'm sorry... I'm not. I'm not sorry. I'm Very not sorry. good. You're such a badass, Milan. <laughs> so impressive. I hope that helps you sleep at night. Dude. There he goes, Milan. Right, Patel, thank you, guys. everybody. Thanks. There you go, Milan Patel. Now on to a guy who does like the show, oh, can perform anywhere, can get laughs anywhere. Uh, hilarious. He's a regular on this show. Writes and performs a brand new minute every single week and uh we love him he's a very unorthodox very very wild uh ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for one of my favorite young rising comedians the great william montgomery everybody hey i'm crazy for feeling come on people make some fucking noise for william I had to uh, tell my daughter for the first time last week, uh, I'm not teaching your ass how to roll a blade. <laughs> so I'm a uh, pretty big boobs guy. Uh, whenever I'm on my calculator, I'm spelling out boobs. I don't know if y'all have uh, ever actually seen Dracula pee, but I haven't. <laughs> he drinks all that blood. Why? So I have a uh, uh, a uh, an idea for a T-shirt. It just has text on it. Uh, not all who have big hands are good at magic. <laughs> <laughs> I just it scares me I've discovered the Cracker Barrel Kid 55 he's getting a bunch of views on YouTube it's scare are you Cracker Barrel Kid 55 <laughs> <laughs> how about Ann for William Montgomery everybody that's a set tonight <laughs> Hell yeah, William, William, William. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you, buddy? Thank you so much. I've been better. Yeah, why? Why have you been better? I almost got fired from work today. Yeah, what I happened? I uh, I was talking to a man. There's a bunch of mentally ill people who who have storage unit. Yeah, places. he works at a self storage unit. For those of you that don't know, he's the one that sells the units. There's basically three sizes: two small, and then regular, and then five a really by five, big one. five by ten, ten by thirty. Yeah. 10 by 30 is like 500 bucks. Mentally yeah. ill, do you mean like homeless people? Because like, there's a lot of homeless people that live in storage units. Is right? that true? Yeah, no. There was a man today. He goes uh, to the bathroom a couple times a day. He's in there like 30 minutes. He seems strange. I was talking to him. I had opened up the store today at 830, and, and I started talking to him. He said he was an angel at one point. He said he had a crooked penis. He called it. Some disease, I can't remember. Basically, my boss came in, though, and was like, William, why are you talking to this guy? Yeah. And I was, I was like, well, it's uh, a f friend of mine. Um, you lied and said that it was a friend of yours to your boss? I did. And, and she and she started yelling at me. I was sitting behind the computer, and at one point in time, she was like, you're just clicking on the mouse all day long. I know you're playing that Bloons Tower Defense game. And I was just like, what the fuck are you talking about, bitch? Re I can't re read. What else do you want me to do on the computer? Re were you really playing the Bloons game? Not at the time, but I do, <laughs> do play it. I, I don't know how to read. Like, what do I do? 
at that job. It's my first assistant manager gig. Is that I, really true that you don't know how to read? It does. Can you give this? Can you give this a shot? Can you plug uh, some of Brian's uh, social media information? Don't fuck up, dude. What do you? How, say? how is it going? <laughs> my name is Brian Holtzman. I. Wow! It really? Yeah, you really can't read. That's no, pretty no, amazing. no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Wow. So you're going to be working at a self storage unit for the rest of your life. The first straight guy all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's gay guys that don't know how to read. <laughs> uh, Brian, so I was I was wondering. I've been watching you from the back. Uh, oh, are you gonna are you gonna ask him if he just moved from Sicily? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he was fucked up. That was, that was so fucked. <laughs> Brian, do you know how to swim? Oh, I do. Yes, yeah, sure. What the fuck? What do you think? Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> William, are you okay? You seem, <laughs> That's what I you was. seem like maybe you didn't sleep last night or maybe you're dehydrated or something. Is everything okay? It's not. What's going on with you? I literally earlier today got fired from my job. You got fired? Yes. You said you got into an argument. You didn't and say we that. And we were talking about that girl with the weed delivery business. Yeah. I don't have her number. Yeah, I specifically. Who is that? There was we got to find there her. There was a couple that was here, a fun fact for you last week. After the show, they come up and uh, they, take a, they take a picture, right, with me. And then you're right there and they go, William, we have an opportunity for you. We want to hire you to work for us. You can make your own schedule. We're such a big fan that you can literally make your own schedule. It's $22 an hour and you get tips. And, uh, you can just you work can, for speed week, You though. can make your own Okay. And I was like, I can't hey. read, bitch. Who, are you Gino? Are you just like, him? I'm sure Gino. She's like, well, we're not hiring sure. you. And I was like, well, I mean, it's the, the 21st century. You're really telling me an able-bodied person, I can't be hired because I can't read. <laughs> William, William, <laughs> stick with me here. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they tell him this, $22 an hour plus tips. They go, yeah, you can make your own schedule. We'll give you off any time you want for gigs or whatever. And I go, William, you heard it. Get exchange information. And then I followed up with you. You literally didn't get their number. I didn't. And now a week later, here we are, and you got fired from your job. <laughs> and there's just a job out there waiting for you. You could probably start tomorrow. Tony, this is probably my last episode. I'm moving back to Memphis. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that for a fucking second. That's I'm my least get, favorite lie uh, you've ever told on this show. I'm going to get big into gambling on the dogs at Southland <laughs> Greyhound Park. <laughs> I'm going to teach in an inner city school in Memphis, English, maybe eighth grade. How are you going to teach English if you don't know how to read, William? It's quite the conundrum. It and is. you don't even know what that word means. <laughs> I'm trying to picture read in my head. Yeah, I don't know what those letters look like. I don't. Are they numbers? <laughs> no, they're not numbers. They're letters. Wow. Well, William, uh, another fun new minute. I, uh, when I was on the road, I saw your new, what's that called? Comics. Uh, un Comic routines. Comic, Comic routines. routines yeah. And they covered you. They did a cool little in-depth, really great fun. production quality, uh, in-depth thing. And I was laughing out loud hysterically, <laughs> uh, especially when your stomach made that noise. Yeah, what is it, was that real, that, that stomach noise? That was it was. Yeah. I really, really, really highly recommend fans of the show, the thousands of people perhaps watching live right now, yeah, uh, if you get a chance this evening, look up uh, uh, Comic Routines. On comic YouTube, space, me, Jeremiah, comic William space have Routines, look up uh, everybody's. Yeah, Joel, Jeremiah, William. Malcolm. And uh, yes, all of them. And also, I'll say this, is that I found, because I, YouTube recommended to me down a rabbit hole right after that, and there was a 12-minute clip that was called William Montgomery Clips Savage Moments, and I went down this rabbit hole. I'm like, 12-minute clip. All right, let's see how this thing starts, and it sort of starts. It looks like a boxing reel, sort of, and, uh, and it was mind-blowing. I watched the entire 12 minutes, and it reminded me of exactly how big of a fan I am of yours and how much I enjoy having you on this show. To get just, to see you in your early days, pre-beer. I just want to give it up for my old next-door neighbor at the... I gave my literal parents' address last week. 
Uh, I want to give it up for Asgar Kalani. He worked on Elvis Presley. Asgar, do you want to stand up? Asgar? Asgar, do you want to stand up? Are you talking to someone right now? Are you Asgar, you at the arm? Stand up, please. Stand up. Is that is that Asgar? Stand up, Asgar. You speak English. Let's give it up for Asgar Kalani, y'all. Hey, he I know that on Elvis. I saw you outside in the line. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Get out! Come on, how about one more time for the great, the powerful, the <laughs> William Montgomery, everybody. Two dollars and a button to William Montgomery. I love you, William. There he goes. All I right, love that we're guy. running out of time. What do you guys think? One more time into the bucket, huh? I don't know. Nobody in the yeah. upper deck is even making any noise back there. I don't know. All right, we'll do it anyway. One more time. One more. How about another hand for Brian Holtzman? What an episode. I feel a little bit loopy because the blood is all stuck up in my head from laughing so goddamn hard. Brian, do you play any instruments? Do you ever play any musical instruments? Tambourine. Oh, really? really? Wow. You could be the new tambourine I can, guy. I can play a real well. Who, you, you could be a retard and play the tambourine. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I pull another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Mina Q, everybody. <laughs> Mina Q, your final comedian Thank of the so night. Much. An elite member of the Apollo 13. One more time for Mina Q. There are not enough black people here for everything I was gonna say. <laughs> Let's just start there. Uh, I'm gayer than I look. I've been uh, gay since dial-up internet, so this is my life now. This is what I'm doing. Um, I don't know any of you guys, so I'll let you know in a little secret. I uh, just got out of a pretty abusive relationship. Um, but I realized when I got out, I didn't even really have a problem with domestic violence. I figured, why can't people who hit people just find other people who want to get hit. I don't understand. I... So we don't have an app for that yet? Really, really, really tender? No? Okay, stupid? Plenty of fists. So none of those exist. I got it, I got it. Plenty of fists always sounds like a very aggressive gay app, though, you know? I don't want to be on that one for sure. All right, my name is Minnie Q. Thank you so much. Heck yeah, Mina Q, everybody. One of our uh, favorite uh, members of the Apollo 13. She's here every single week, signs up every single week. I do. Fun times. Thank you. And uh, you awesome. are a black lesbian. I am, oh, yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I, oh, it's true? <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking straight people on this fucking show? <laughs> uh, I well, love it. Change the title to the freak show. Tony <laughs> Freak Show! Well, let me be... Uh, let me be clear. Fuck! I, Did anybody have sex traditionally? <laughs> Is everybody a freak? You're too beautiful to be a carpet munching. Oh, my God! <laughs> Vacuum the carpet. Don't munch it, bitch! Fun fact. It's a phase. Uh, She'll grow out of it. It's a fucking phase. <laughs> Brian, uh, Brian normally doesn't go on stage before 12.30 a.m. here at the Comedy Store. I don't know if I mentioned that. He usually closes the show following uh, 15 uh, it's months. Still good to be a comedians. dyke. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll be honest. I, I'm, not, I'm not, like, gay like that. I just like fucking these bitches. It's a very hard line in the sand. Oh, I'm it's not a political. different thing. Your yeah. emotions aren't involved. I'm not yeah. It's just yeah. your tongue and your pussy. Yeah, that's it. I love it. <laughs> Um, that is that is so cool. Uh, how long how long have you been doing stand up comedy? Uh, about eight years. Eight years. That is so cool. All of it here in Los Angeles. Um, I've kind of traveled around a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, but mostly here, a lot here. Uh -huh. Like we'll travel. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you traveled to? Anywhere? Um, I well, I'm from Atlanta, so I've done stand up out there okay. in uh, Cleveland and some up north. Oh, very cool, very cool. Like what do you? Uh, how do you make a living? Um, I am a, I'm a, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> um, I work at a restaurant. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, cool. You work at a restaurant. That's interesting. Cause you like eating out a lot. Yeah. Um, that's fun. I do. I do. 
Made it a career. <laughs> Mina, I love it. What do you like to do for fun? Oh, my God. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm kind of simple. I just like making ridiculous videos. Jasmine and I make videos all the time. You know Jasmine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I follow, yeah, I follow, I follow you guys on Instagram. I follow both of you, uh, two of the... Uh, Two of the people that I follow. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys do make crazy videos. Yeah, we have fun together. Yeah, of course. How long have you two known each other? Oh, we've known each other for like a year now. You guys ever hook up? Or no? No. You guys are both like tops or something like that, right? No, Jasmine is straight, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. No, I don't I don't believe that at all for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fag that's a kind of a fag haircut. <laughs> Well, that's a freak haircut. Who the fuck's cutting your hair? We should put you a might as well fucking be We should a put dyke. a disclaimer on this video to only oh, watch yeah. after twelve thirty. <laughs> or if you're if you were born uh, before nineteen fifty. <laughs> I mean, uh, with that with that haircut, you're about as straight as a blade. So Okey Wesley dokey. Snipes yeah. blade uh, blade joke. Nobody. Okay. All right. Heck yeah. Somebody got HBO twenty years ago. Oh my all god. Right. Dude, I'll bully this audience. Anyway, care. so uh, so Mina, uh, fun times. You live by yourself? No, with Jasmine. Oh, you guys are roommates. Oh, that's yeah. fun. That's yeah. cool. And a few other people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Heck yeah. What part of town do you live in? In Northridge. So the Valley. Wow, North. Eight one eight. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's a. Uh, Northridge is what, like 30, 40 minutes north? It's like 25. Yes. If there you, you can, go. Without yeah. traffic, 25, 30. The late, great Brody Stevens. Enjoy it! Representing the Valley. They, uh, we just got word that our friend over at Rock and Pins, Mauricio, uh, went to a uh, went to one of the big parks in the Valley, went to a baseball field, found a bench, and they're going to dedicate that bench to Brody Stevens. It's going to. Uh, awesome. That's our friend Mauricio at Rockin' Pins. You get a Death Squad pin, a Kill Tony pin, a Tony Hinchcliffe what, pin. What, what park is that? It's, is it Reseda Park? Is yeah, I think so. It's yes, Reseda, Reseda Park. park. Uh, yeah. Left field. And you can check out, you can sit on Brody. Yeah. Heck yeah. There you go. Um, wow. So, Mina, any other fun facts about you? Do your parents uh, know that you're into the ladies? Yes. And Everybody knows now. Yeah. I mean, I've been dating women for like 15 years. Who, so. was, who was the hardest person to come out to? Um, I think my aunt, uh -huh. only because she's like very religious. Yeah. So I, I didn't think that was going to go over well. How did it go? Um, you know, for some reason when you come out, you feel like emotional about it. I was like, okay, I'm going to bring somebody home for Thanksgiving yeah. and we're dating uh -huh. and she's a woman. And she was like, okay, yeah, you know, but she was very nice when right. she met her and now nobody And then cares. she hung up the phone and said a hundred <laughs> Hail Marys. Yeah, basically. But now everybody's cool. Nobody really gives me any, you know, shit about it. That's so cool. I'm curious. You're saying that you, you like women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would the color of your dildo be? That's a good. No, I don't know if this okay. is. This could be off no, color. I, 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 have I don't mean. Two. I have two dildos. Are they white or are they black? Are they? Uh, They're neither. Malango? <laughs> uh, I'm just curious. Nobody's curious. That's actually, I'm curious. No, I'm curious. I'm the only one who wants to know what color the dildos are. No, I want to know. Come on, what the fuck? Why do I feel like I'm the fucking <laughs> the man? One. The, no. Odd man out. I agree. I want to know the colors of the dildo. Did you guys want to know the colors of her dildos? Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> so I have two dildos. Um, one of them, the first one I bought, is like, I call it the infinity dick because it has, it's like the color of all the stones. You remember Thanos' hand? It's like that color. Wow. So that's the infinity dick. And that one's big. It's a big, thick one. And then I have another one that's blue. And that one is just like, you know, for Avatar people who can't dick. handle the bigger one. Heck yeah. So you don't go for the colors of people? No, I don't really want a big black dick, or I'd be with one probably. How about, so. a, how about, a, how about, a, how about a medium white one or a little yellow one? I definitely don't want those. No, I'm okay. I, I want some colors in the middle of it, Tony. <laughs> Size doesn't matter, okay? It does not. You're right. Not to me. Not to me. So you have your own homecoming, huh? I have my own what? Homecoming. Well, yeah. <laughs> why? What does that mean? I don't. Cody. I, I come by myself at home. Oh. Right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Dude, it was a homecoming joke, bro. No, I, I got it. All right, Polly Shore. Thank you. Uh, I love it. Well, 
Um, Thank you. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. You are, you're absolutely right, Brian. Thank she is you. beautiful, and uh, I uh, I loved your set. Very fun, Thank and uh, I love I especially love you and Jasmine's uh, loyalty here every single Monday. Of course, always Thank brings a so smile much. to my face. You guys, Aphrodite. Abraham, I guess, right? Uh, Jared A. Moreau's every single week since the belly room back there. It's always fun to see uh, the regulars. Rick Kosick, Keel, everybody. So thank you so much. Amina Q, everybody. She's got two bucks and a button. That's for sure. How loud can this place get for his first ever appearance on Kill Tony? The great Brian Holtzman, everybody. Come on. Hell yeah. You be sure to follow him at, Bri at Holtzman Brian on Twitter, Brian Holtzman on Facebook, BrianHoltzman.com, and Brian Holtzman on Instagram. That's B R I A N H O L T Z M A N. As you uh, found out today, he, uh, wow, look at that comic book style. Look at you up there. Wow, that is incredible. Ryan, make sure you show that to camera. How about another hand for the great Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? Jeremiah Watkins on YouTube, Jeremiah stand up on social media. Uh, he is uh, he's uh, going on tour with Reagan and Watkins. The new Reagan and Watkins album is available now at reaganandwatkins.com. Where are you going? Tell us about the gigs you have coming up. Yeah, uh, June June 28th, Reagan and Watkins will be headlining in San Diego and then uh, July uh, 18th will be a stand-up live in Phoenix, and Joel Berg will be with us. And then uh, July 20th, Saturday, in Huntington Beach at the Rec Room, William Montgomery and Joel Jimenez will be opening for us uh, down there. And then check out the new episode of Jeremiah Wonders with Dean Del Rey this week, and follow me on social media at Jeremiah Stand-Up. Thank you. Wow. Gets longer and longer every single week. How about another hand for Chroma Chris, everybody? <laughs> Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? It, uh, it, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it, uh, it, it, varsity blew my mind, Tony. <laughs> hey, it shouldn't have gone to overtime. <laughs> hey, how about one more time for the great Joelberg Joel Jimenez, huh? Come on, people. Got the chance going for you. He's at Mostly Sorry on social media. Anything else, Joel? Shout out to Ludwig. I think Brian is going to be an instant fan favorite. What a great episode. We love you guys. Have a good night. Heck yeah. Uh, we love you, Brian Holtzman. So much fucking fun. We're back on the road this week. New York. Uh, we're going to Poughkeepsie, New York City, and Skank Fest. And then we're back next Monday with a very special secret guest. And uh, we love you, live audience. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Brian? Hey, I'll be in San Diego, oh, August shit. 17th, headlining, so check that out. Hell yeah. See ya. Heck yeah. <laughs>